Yo, what's going on? I'm Youngblood, and you're listening to WRSU FM, New Brunswick. Um, I love you. Have a good day. How is this? How has this American tour been different from your last last fall? Um, it's just been kind of like a rocket. It's like been ten times more energetic, and the last tour was pretty energetic. I just think it sold out so quick. That was what was kind of bizarre. It sold out in like five minutes. The whole thing. So I think people who are here really want to be here. You know what I mean? And I don't know, man. They're just the energy's just been crazy, and the community's just been just. I think everything's just times by ten. The love, the create, the, the creativity, the energy, the the vibe. It's just been mad. Do you have any crazy tour stories from this tour yet? Oh, mate, mad tour stories. I think. I think. Or anything funny. Anything, anything funny. Um, our bus toilet leaked, oh. which was a bit bad. It made the bus stink, which was just not great. Who are you looking at? Gavin. No, <laughs> it wasn't for anyone's fault. I think it was just a yeah. thing. I think one of the tanks just did something, and we just, I just walked in one night. I was like, what? This is really bad. And then everyone was like, yeah, it's really bad. And my tour manager, Jess, like, is mm -hmm. totally hygienic, like the most hygiene person she was just like i can't and she's australian she was like i can't do this i can't do this but we got through it and we figured it out and then here we are yeah so i heard that you got a piece of the table from the roxy yes um how did you acquire that um so basically there's a little back room at the roxy that's a secret well it's not a secret anymore because i just opened my big mouth that like kind of it used to be john lennon's bedroom apparently um it used to be john lennon's bedroom apparently and um, me and Adam were in there one night and we had a couple of drinks and we were just being loud and rowdy. And we got on the table of it and we would jump into the Beastie Boys, I remember Sabotage. And we were just being just ridiculous, pouring champagne everywhere, jumping on the table, cracked the table. And I was like, fuck, we just cracked the table of, we cracked the marble table in the private secret room in the Roxy. So I put it in my pocket and I've still got it to this day. Yeah, have you taken pieces of table from other venues? Um, no, I've not done that yet, but I, you've given me an idea, so I'm probably gonna take, I'm gonna rip the table up now and take take it from here. Yeah, I mean, you could just make a table out of- The table. The pieces. pieces. That's a great idea. And just call it like the tour table. Great idea. And have everyone dance on it. I should do that, and like, I'll make it a lot more stable than all the other tables. Yeah, so That no rhymes. One. Yeah, oh, there you go. That yeah, rhymes. Weird. Um, so you grew up listening to a lot of different kinds of artists. Um, so what, was there a defining moment for you when you saw another artist performing that you knew you wanted to be on stage one day? Um, to be honest, I used to watch Mick Jagger religiously online. Yeah. You know, and, um, and Freddie Mercury. And I just kind of knew the theater they brought to the stage. Mm -hmm was just so crazy and the sex that they kind of brought to music which is amazing and it's so crazy it's just like i don't know they had that thing where it's like 75 percent of people will look at a picture of a model and go oh or anybody and like a beautiful picture and go oh i want to have sex with you but what they had was no i'm gonna have sex with you so That's think, the way uh, they came at it, and I was like, "That is so fucking cool." <laughs> and I, and uh, and yeah, man. But I remember going to an Arctic Monkeys show, and I don't know. It just encapsulated everything. The sense of community that I'd never, never seen before. It was amazing. Yeah. So you think uh, you'd ever play Mick Jagger in a biopic? Uh, if they'd have me, I'd love that. Yeah, I think that's a possibility. I feel that'd like that's in the works. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've heard that'd be about that. If you're listening and you're Yo, casting. if you're the producer, call me, please. Yeah. Um, so, are there any artists that you listen to that people would be surprised to hear about, you think? I am. I am artists that I listen to. I don't know, man. I love Tyler, the creator's new album. It came out, came out yesterday, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love that album, man. A lot of people think I just listen to rock music, if you don't know me, do you know what I mean? But I literally love yeah. hip hop. I love Justin Bieber. I love pop music, do you know what I mean? I love anything that's melodic and anything that's real. 
know what I mean? As long as it's mm-hmm. real, I believe it. As long as I believe it, I listen to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it makes sense. It's cool. And you can tell, like, in your music that, you know, you're 100% real in yours. That's so it, man. I just, yeah. as, I, as I always say, man, I just, that's all I want to be. And I just can't, you know what I mean? Like, when, like, you talk about artists, and you talk about, like, the real, <coughs> incredible artists, like David Bowie or Kurt Cobain, it's like, well, I don't want to be Kurt Cobain. I don't want to be David Bowie. I just want to be real. Yeah. You know? Um, speaking of being real, this is kind of like taking a turn, but so I saw this movie, 24 Hour Party People. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> that's literally yeah. about my, the, my neck of the woods. That's about the UK. Yeah. Well, I, I was dating someone from there. So oh, it's kind of like he showed me all this stuff and I didn't even know like who Joy Division was at the time, to be honest. Oh but, um, my God. <laughs> Joy Division. That is a I sin. Know. I know. But I bet you can't get enough now. But you're yeah. obsessed with them now. Well, yeah, I watched like the videos a million times. I'm like, how? Dude, it's crazy. crazy. Jinx. That, that was crazy. That was crazy. It was um, so crazy at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So being from that neck of the, the that, that neck, neck of the, neck of the woods. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um. So obviously, at that time, at least, I don't know how it is today, but a lot of things were brushed under the rug. Like they talk about, you know, when they started New Order um, after Ian Curtis yeah. passed away, they kind of. Just, didn't really talk about mental health no. at all. So how does it feel to almost be the voice of the generation, to who one of the only artists who's like really talking about mental health? I mean, in your <coughs> set, you talk about it, and to be from there, does it completely, man? Yeah, as I say, that? that I I listen to artists, like, and I I would I was obsessed with Ian Curtis, and I was I, I mean I wasn't there. I wasn't even born. I don't think when he when he when he passed away my mate no I wasn't even born when he passed away yeah. and um, I don't know I, I just he wanted so desperately to talk about it but the time wasn't ready for them yet and I just I don't talk about mental health because it's trendy or it's going to make people listen I talk about it because that's just what's real to me mm. you know what I mean I've been in that position where I have wanted to take my own life I've been in that position where I wake up in the morning, the sun's shining, and uh, I've got a knot in my stomach, and I don't know why, even though the night before I felt like I could fly. That rhymes, it's weird. Um, it just happens. Now. Yeah, sometimes. But um, I just write about it because it's real, and, and, and connecting to people is what I needed to do. I felt so alone. I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. Mm. And I just kind of think if you don't belong anywhere, you don't fit a mold, then build your own mold you know what I mean yeah yeah so and I definitely think that you're doing that and so a lot of the influences on 21st century um came from you know I love you will you marry me and Tim Pan Boy came from that area but now that you've been traveling um in your new music do you take a lot of influence from other places yeah like bonkers there's a song coming out like imminently that just sounds like Marshall Mavers meets Nine Inch Nails meets reggae meets drum and bass I don't know it's crazy as I, as I say like I just think genres becoming more and more irrelevant every single morning I wake up you know what I mean and mm. I just think that's really cool that we don't have to be in a barrier before at any in any barriers because mm. because I don't know if you mix things together then that's when you get something new right Mm-hmm. And music is, I, th- I think people think that music has limits, but it, nah. it, music represents freedom. So yeah, how mu- could it? music literally yeah. defies limits. Any yeah. limitation that's put on music, it ain't music. It's maths. Yeah. So you know, and I would say you're definitely one of the artists that is proving that music is. Oh, which is thank you so much. You're welcome. And um, so anything else you want to share about new music? As I say, man, it's like there's loads coming. Yeah. Like. I've, I had a bit of a writing period, but the, I'm literally about to vomit so much music in everyone's faces. And there's another tour coming. We're going to announce another UK, US tour. Yeah. ASAP. The fall. My manager's looking at me like I'm not allowed. Like, but I don't care. We're coming back in the fall. So like now it's just going to be every day you say it. That's it. I, it don't matter. Make people know. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Sick.